Hello and welcome to another edition of TNT Gaming Channel with me, your resident reviewer, Toma. Today we're going to take a look at High res Studios' sci-fi third-person MMO known as Global Agenda. I originally tried the beta for this game before it was released as a pay-to-play game and quite enjoyed myself but didn't find enough content to validate spending a monthly fee to play. Besides, World of Warcraft had me completely under its spell at this point and we all know the seductive pull of WoW, don't we? But when I heard this game was going free to play back at the beginning of April, I just had to revisit Global Agenda to see what has changed and whether Hi Res Studio has made a good decision in releasing a free to play version. So without further ado, onward! The game is set in the distant future on Earth and a lot has changed from our present day. Huge super cities have grown and spread across the surface of the planet and the human race has developed flying vehicles to help navigate the endless maze of man-made structures. It kind of reminds me a bit of Fifth Element, you know, big bada boom. I could insert my Bruce Willis impression here, but I've been told I'm not allowed. It's probably for the best. It is rubbish. Anyway, your character is thrown straight into the action from the get-go. You choose one class from an array of the usual suspects, be it a medic, or a tech guy who makes turrets and defences, assault, or recon, aka the sniper, or invisibility. Then it's up to you to escape this weird testing lab in a tutorial that proves basic but does just enough to teach you the controls, using the jetpacks and sorting you out with basic armour etc, all while you're surrounded by a smooth running game and enjoyable surroundings. I am a bit worried by the mannequins in the windows but I'll let that slide. So overall no quarrels here. Once you escape many many droids, you're whisked away to Dome City. Now can anyone watching this video tell me why it's called Dome City? anyone? Personally that annoys me when the developers don't name something other than just to describe what it is they're naming. I get it, it's a city under a dome. No need to call it that as well. I mean call it anything else. Might as well name it Dome City sponsored by Budweiser because it's starting to sound more like a sports stadium the more I say it. Dome City. I need to stop being so petty but in my mind it's the little things that make games more interesting to play. Ogramar, you're now called Spiky Rock deserty place. It doesn't work does it? With the smallest issues out of the way and my blood pressure back to normal you're greeted with actually a really awesome place to game. The city feels well thought out and as a main quest hub provides all the amenities you would need. Armour, auction house, haircuts, even dye for your armour so you can choose its colour. So massive ticks there. Don't worry about getting lost as there are plenty of info hubs that show you where to go. I do have to say that Auction House is only available to premium players so upgrade for that part of the game. I haven't upgraded as of yet and I haven't felt at any less of an advantage but you may find a need for it from the start so it's up to you. When questing you're thrown outside into the barren waste of the desert to meet some junkers, do some quests, it's the usual shizzle. Again the surroundings look very slick and well put together and I've not seen any lag in the open environments or even in the closed in crowded areas. Speaking of crowded areas, I am always relatively close to other players. There is always someone jetpacking over my head into battle or returning a quest, so there's always plenty of people to talk to. I mean, there's nothing worse than feeling completely alone in an MMO. One minor quirky little thing I found was some of the statements from NPCs. I found a woman who's very forward about finding the attention of other females. You leave my sister alone, you bitch. Oh, wait. I don't actually have a sister. Oh, go, go ahead then. And this guy who offsets his lack of clothes with an amazing moustache and then tells me some very derogatory comments about women. I imagine the post-apocalyptic wastelands of futuristic Earth to be a lonely place, but with these comments like this, it's going to be even lonelier for you, pal. One major part of Global Agenda I had heard so much about is the PvE and PvP sections of the game. From level 5 onwards you can throw yourself into a game whilst teamed up with other players. The higher your level goes the more types of match you can unlock. Completing these matches will give you rewards, similar mechanics to all other MMOs but that's because it works so why change it? In all the team based games I've played on Global Agenda I haven't hit any complications with lag or people dicking about. I may have been lucky so far, if you do find any issues when you play let me know. The missions are varied and the team's based sides of things makes the whole experience a little more tactical. As a recon I chilled out at the back of the team taking headshots and shooting enemy snipers targeting my teammates. The mechanic laid down turrets and shields whilst the medic healed us and the assault guy had an Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator 2 moment. He needs a cigar and this would be perfect. 
Overall, I've enjoyed the time I've spent on this game. The patches and updates for Global Agenda have changed a lot of the issues that it had before in pay's play form, so it's well worth the ticket price of zero. The game has the feel of something that you can get fantastically addicted to and use up every second tweaking your character and armour, but also suits the casual drop-in drop-out gamer. Want to fly a jetpack? Chop stuff up with a sword or tear things up with a minigun for 20 minutes or so? Well, here you have both sides of that coin. I would urge you not to listen to a lot of the critics who slam this game from when it was paid to play because the new free agent version puts a new slant on the global agenda and gives the game a refreshed feel. As always, try it for yourself and see what you think. Leave me a comment as I'd love to know if you enjoy it as much as I did and also remember to subscribe. Any ideas on what you want reviewed, let us know at TNT Gaming Channel. Laters!